Hey guys, it is Wingy here and welcome to my now long overdue review of Doctor Who Series 5. Now I've often said Series 5 is, was, probably always will be one of my favourite series of Doctor Who ever. Out of the new series, you can make a case that it's probably the best one. And I think what makes that all the more amazing is that this came from the back of a very successful era of the show with the Russell T Davis era and obviously the David Tennant era. And this was totally new. It was brand new. It was fresh. Stephen Moffat took over as showrunner. Matt Smith took over as the Doctor. And it was just a weird time to be a Doctor Who fan because no one really knew what to expect. But I think it's safe to say, in the end, it paid off. So before I properly get into the episodes that I'll talk about and what I think of Matt Smith and Karen Gillan and all this sort of stuff, I have to give you a bit of context because around the time that this came out, David Tennant was probably my favorite Doctor. That is nowhere near the case now, but at the time, that's what it was. David Tennant was the Doctor that I had grown up with, I had been used to. I mean, I've watched the classics as well, but I was still kind of flip-flopping between the two of them. Like, some days I'd be like, oh yeah, Classic Era's way better. Other days I'd be like, nah, it's a new series. And also it was a very significant time in my life because it felt like when Tennant left and Matt Smith came in, it was almost like a sign of the end of my childhood type thing because I was around that age. So part of me was thinking like, oh, that's it then. Like, my childhood's over. I'm not going to enjoy Doctor Who anymore. It's all going to change. It's not going to be the same anymore. There's literally barely anything about it that's going to be recognisable as the show that I love. Straight away, you can feel the differences you can feel that yes this is still doctor who but this is a different show you know this is not the same as when tenant was around or when eccleston was around or when russell was writing this is a totally different vibe and a feel series five really had this weird fantasy fairy tale vibe to it and to be honest i dig it a lot i mean at the time i probably wouldn't have thought this but Thinking about it with hindsight, Doctor Who really needed a refresh, and I think this was it. It was perfectly timed. I think with this opening episode as well, you needed to grab viewers straight away. And I think it's got that typical Moffatism where something isn't just in a straight line. It's not like A to B. There's a little bit of a curveball there. So obviously the fact that the Doctor meets Amy when she's a kid, and then he's just like, right, I'll be back in a minute. And then he's like, what, 12 years late? That's a really nice Moffat thing. I like when Moffat does stuff like that, where he will throw you a bone and say, hey, this is what it's like. And then he's just like, ha, ah, no, it's not. It's actually like this. In moderation, it works so, so well. And I think that's exactly what series five was. It was Moffat doing that in moderation. And I think the prime example of that is in fact the 11th hour. And what I think is even better about it is the fact that it has time to breathe. It's just over an hour long. I think it's like 65 minutes. It's very fast paced. It's very well written. It's very well acted. And straight away, you get everything that you need to know about this era. You get the vibe of it, which is the fairy tale stuff. You get an idea of Matt Smith's doctor. You get an idea of the relationship and the dynamic between him and the new companion. You feel straight away Moffat's input. Like this episode is one that I could rewatch time after time. I think it is arguably the best post-regeneration story that we have ever had. Now, you obviously have stuff like Power of the Daleks, Spearhead from Space, that contend with this, but I don't think there's many others. Series 5 hit the ground running. I don't think it ever really stopped. Now, something like The Beast Below, for example, isn't necessarily the best episode, but it's still enjoyable when you're watching it. But the one that I want to talk about next is the Angel 2 part of, because for me, that properly solidified Matt Smith as the Doctor. I loved him in the 11th hour, but... The Angel 2 part was a key moment for me, really, because it was the first time we saw the Doctor interact with someone who he's already met. Now, obviously, there was the Daleks in the previous episode, but Victory of the Daleks is a really crap version of power. So with this, not only do you get the recurring villain, which is the Weeping Angels, which is obviously a Moffat staple, but you also get River Song, and you get a little bit more about her, and it starts to unravel again more about what Moffat is doing with the show. He is going to give you that mystery box thing. He's going to give you threads that will lead somewhere. Sometimes those threads will in fact lead somewhere and it'll be very, very satisfying. Other times they will lead somewhere, but it won't be very satisfying. Other times they'll go absolutely fucking nowhere and again, it's not satisfying. However, the ones that he does give you that lead somewhere and it's satisfying, they're the ones that we care about. River Song, I feel, initially starts off like that. At least initially, she seems like a really interesting, engaging character, you know? She's got something about her. With hindsight, it's painfully fucking obvious what Moffat is trying to do. However, at the time, 
there was that, ooh, what is she about? I think the fact that this was the first story that Matt and Karen filmed, that for me makes it all the more impressive because you kind of feel Matt feeling his own way around the park, but it works for this story. I think with the tension of the angels and being chased through the forest and the crack in time and everything, it works for this story and it really makes me fall in love with the 11th Doctor. This is like my favorite version of Matt Smith's Doctor because he has got that sort of boffin, mad professor type thing about him, but he's also got a heart and you can really tell that he is an old man in a young man's body. So let's talk about Matt Smith for a bit. Now, again, at the time, Tennant was like one of my favorite doctors and I was just like, yeah, no one can replace him. Turns out they can, <laughs> they absolutely can because Matt Smith, I forgot about Tennant pretty much instantly. Like I just said, he does that old man in a young man's body type thing, but he's a bit more than that. He's got a mysterious darkness to him. He's got an edge to him. And the fact that he is, at the time at least, an unknown actor and the youngest actor to play the part, he had such a weight on his shoulders and following from Tennant, but he nails it. I don't think Matt Smith, as a performer, ever failed as the Doctor. I think some of the stuff that he was given failed him and the characterization of his Doctor borderline on parody at points particularly in series six and seven but in this season this is the 11th doctor that i love i love his costume in this series as well it's stylish but again it is kind of the old man in a young man's body it looks like sort of geek chic that young people would wear but it is something that you would stereotypically associate with an older person the bow tie the tweed jacket matt is just so engaging in this series and i think him and karen their chemistry really makes this series special for me because it's similar to the relationship of David Tennant and Donna, you know, that sort of dynamic where they are just friends. Yes, there are some awkward moments where Amy does try and plant herself on the Doctor and it's really awkward to watch. But apart from that, I like their dynamic. I like their relationship. I think they both add something new, something fresh to the parts. And I don't think that their dynamic or their relationship is better beyond this series, I think it actually gets worse. But we'll talk about that more in the next couple of reviews. But Karen's great though, in this series. I absolutely adore Karen Gillan in this series, apart from the obvious weird stuff, where she's just like, yeah, I'm obsessed with this guy who is in my imagination. Yeah. Why does Rory put up with her? I also wanna briefly talk about The Lodger as another standout episode for me, because I know a lot of people tend to shit on this episode, and trust me, I get you. However, I quite like it. So I just wanted to take this opportunity to defend the lodger. Objectively, it is nowhere near the best episode of the series. That is easily the Angel two-parter, or the 11th hour, or the finale, or even Amy's Choice, actually. That's a beller as well. But I really like this one. It's a new dynamic again. You know, seeing this Doctor, who is clearly quite alien in an ordinary setting, and trying to, you know, be a normal flatmate, and try and just live a normal life for a bit that's really interesting taking this doctor out of his comfort zone i think was a brilliant idea and whether or not the episode itself is great it's a bit lackluster on the plot side the character stuff is what i really like about it but it does annoy me to a point where it's like why is the doctor perfect at everything surely he should be bad at some things but then again his relationship with james corden or craig whatever he's called i quite enjoy it i like their chemistry it's clear that those two get on as well I think Matt Smith just gets on with everybody. But anyway, let's talk about the finale. Now, I remember the finale of Series 5 being like a mind fuck. Pandorica opens Big Bang. Can't actually remember which order that is. I think it might be that order. Either way, it's a really good finale. It's a really strong finale. And to be honest, the sad thing is, I don't think Moffat did a good finale ever again. You guys know exactly how I feel towards Moffat finales, but this one he gets it so right, he doesn't take it too far. I like the fact that there is this alliance, as a one-off I like it, where all of the monsters in the universe, all these different creatures and aliens, they're basically fed up with the Doctor and they're like, you know what, let's all team up, let's put aside our differences because we need to get rid of this dickhead because for too long he has stopped us from doing what we want to do. He has stopped us from our conquests, from taking over various planets and exterminating them lot over there and whoever. But I love the fact that you don't know that straight away. I love the build up in the first part, I really do. I love the fact that it's a mystery that the Doctor just can't quite resist trying to solve and in the process just falls for the trap. And then the second part, whilst I don't think is as good, I still enjoy it a hell of a lot. I love the little threads that have been planted throughout the entire series that build up to it. So for example, 
I distinctly remember at the time watching Flesh and Stone. Is that the second part? Yeah, Flesh and Stone. So the bit where Amy's just sat down on the log and the doctor's talking to her and you see his arms reach out and sort of grab her whilst he's talking. And he comes out with some weird dialogue, but that wasn't what I noticed as a kid. I noticed that Matt was suddenly wearing his jacket and I was just like, that's a really poor continuity error because Matt is clearly not wearing his jacket and he hasn't worn it for like 10, 15 minutes on screen now. So the fact that they've just given him his jacket for him to wear in that scene is really bizarre. You get to the finale, it makes sense. It's a different version of the Doctor, it's him from the future. And it's stuff like that where it's like, that's actually really clever. I mean, that is something really nitpicky that I don't think many people would have noticed necessarily at the time. I know I did just because I was a nerd. And I was just like, I'm going to pick apart every single second of this. But it's also like the stuff with the crack as well. The fact that with the angels in that same story and then it appears in various other different stories and it has somewhat of a resolve in this story but not quite and I also really like that they reboot the universe I, I don't like the demigod doctor stuff where it's like oh god the universe without the doctor how terrible it all falls to shit I don't like that stuff but in an episode like this I can kind of understand where they're coming from because it's like okay so well you're taking someone significant out of the universe so things are probably going to go to shit if he isn't around. I don't like it but logically it would make sense. And I just like that old loop that Moffat does. I don't particularly like some of the stuff in the episode though but for a series finale with all the threads that was building up to it and all the characters and you know the stuff with Rory who I haven't really mentioned but I'll talk about him a bit more in series 6 because he has a lot more of an impact than I feel. Overall, for a first series, like a first full series, I don't think they put a foot wrong. I can't sit here and honestly say, you know what, I liked a majority of that series, however, that episode, that was a bit crap. I don't actually think that. You can name any episode of series five, and I'm pretty much gonna guarantee you that I like it. Even Victory of the Daleks, which for me is easily the worst of the series, even that has its merits because I like seeing well, I mean, I like the first two thirds, maybe. When there's like Spitfires in space, I'm like, that's fucking garbage. And I don't like the weird fat jelly baby Daleks, but I like some of the stuff. And I like the plan that the Daleks have. And yes, it is a poor man's rip off of Power of the Daleks, but I like Power of the Daleks. So to see a rubbish version of it is still pretty good. This series had so much riding on it. And I think they got it so right. From the casting choices, to the writing, everything is 100% solid. Unfortunately, for me personally, it's also such a shame because I don't think we've had a series that has been this good since. I really don't. I don't think anything post this has come close to series five. I think Doctor Who's been going downhill ever since this series and it's such a shame because this series was 10 years ago now. Either way, for me, series five, I'm giving a nine out of 10. I think, yes, some of the episodes could be better, such as Victory, such as The Lodger, even though I really like it. I think The Beast Below is a little bit forgettable, but it is enjoyable. But apart from that, all the episodes are pretty strong. Silorian 2 part is a bit naff as well. But I enjoy it, that's the thing. Even when it's like not great, I enjoy it. That's the sign of a great series to me. I'm never bored, really, throughout this series. Why did I not talk about Vincent and the Doctor? See, that's amazing as well. Like, See, this is what I mean. This is such a fantastic series. Like, Vincent and the Doctor, phenomenal. 11th Hour, phenomenal. The Angel 2 part, the finale, Amy's Choice. It's all great. In the comments below, though, guys, let me know what you think of Series 5. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Whatever it is, let me know. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like on it. Subscribe for more. Social media and Patreon links will be in the description, as always. So if you'd follow me on any of those things, I'd absolutely love you forever. But until next time, guys, you take care of yourselves. Goodbye.